Welcome to Lift Your Leg. This is Monique Anstey from the Naughty Dog in Victoria, BC, author of As a Dog Thinketh. And Jill Brown from Calgary, Alberta, the bag lady. Tonight we are discussing breeds that people should be getting, breeds that we see in just normal homes that are successful in their families, that we don't see many behavior problems with, and that just kind of fit in and are enjoyable. And there's so many breeds out there that people have never even heard of. So that is what we're going to bring the spotlight to today. Not just the unknown ones, but breeds that people should be considering. Yep. Anything to add, Jilly Bean? I don't think so. Are we just going to go through group by group? Yep. We're going to go formally through. So in the kennel clubs, they have all the dog breeds divided into groups. So. I'm terrible on this stuff, but I do believe the first group is sporting dogs. Mm -hmm. And the sporting dogs are golden retrievers, the spaniels, the setters, those types of dogs. Yep. Jill, all those. What's um, your first pick that you see having success in family homes and just pet dog homes? Well, I mean, you have to go with the goldens and the labs just based on the numbers. Definitely. Golden retrievers are number one. Labrador retrievers, but I want to add to this working li- not working lines. They Correct. need to be the confirmation Labradors. And with Labradors, I have several chocolates in my life that I absolutely love. So it's chocolate chip, Georgie and Hank. But generally the chocolates can be a lot more energy, a bit more frantic. So stick with the blacks and the yellows for the most part. Yeah, I found the chocolates to be a little bit stronger willed as well. Yeah. Than the yellows and the blacks. Some of the chocolates, so if you're getting an English confirmation chocolate, they're wonderful. But if you're not, they're not so wonderful. Yeah. So some chocolates are absolutely fantastic. Most are not. So just be more careful if you're getting a chocolate. And you can come up with so many cool names for the chocolates. Chocolate chip. Bernard. Bernard. That's not a cool name. That's just... <laughs> Bernard Calibo. Yeah, I, I got it, Jill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's your third one? Um, I do like the English Cockers. There's not, we don't see a whole lot of them out there. More the American Cockers is what you see when you're talking Cocker Spaniels. But the English, I really like them. Thanks, man. Why? English. Oh, oh, I said English cockers. <laughs> I love clumbers. Yes. It's another breed, clumber spaniels. You don't see many of them, but they are quite special. They're, I, I actually love all the spaniels. The Britneys are way too high energy for most people to enjoy in their homes. You have to be very, very active, a little bit crazy to love a Brittany, but they are fabulous dogs. Yeah. The Springers have had some temperament issues through the years, but the Spaniels are wonderful, wonderful dogs. Yeah. I Uh, like the Setters too, but now I'm getting off topic. Irish Setters was my, that was my, my childhood dog that I wanted to have. I read all the, the big red books. Yep. Wanted Wanted me an Irish Setter. They are one of the most beautiful dogs, I think. They are stunning. Springer Spaniels are another one. If you go to the field lines, you're going to get that high, high energy, frantic. So if you're looking at a Springer, smarter to go with the confirmation lines. I think with a lot of these dogs, maybe, maybe not all, but with a lot of them, you are smarter to go with confirmation lines. If you're just looking for a pet, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is one of, I think, my favorite group, Hounds. Oh, my. I love the hounds. Jill, what's your first pick? I only have one pick. Sorry. <laughs> it's Well, that's not true. My first pick is Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank he, you. But he's the only basset that I would want to have. Mini long-haired dachshunds. Oh, yes. They're delightful. Love them. Although I don't they're really bad, though. Are they, I wouldn't say they're successful in pet homes. The mini long-haired? Yeah. Mm. They're bad. No, the short hairs are. 
They're all bad, the little no. Daxies, but I love them. The long hairs are sweet, but I don't know. I don't know if the minis go in the hound category, do they? Or would they be in the Yes. Hound? No, they're, they're here. Yeah, I would have a mini long haired dachshund. Aside right. from the issues with, with backs, you have to be sure to keep them lean because they have a lot of disc problems if they're real what, weight. What's your third choice? I would have a whippet. I've always really. It's not for you. It's what would you? What do people succeed whippet? with? Whippets. I think you could succeed with a whippet. I, think I see. Are, I agree. A yeah. lot of them. Are, they're fabulous pets. Yeah. They're a lot of fun without making you want to increase your drinking. <laughs> um, well, and it's funny because even with them being a sight hound and being bred to run, they're happy being a lazy dog around the house. They need to run, and then they're the most wonderful, lazy, snuggly things at home. They're, they're fabulous dogs. Very underappreciated. Give them a sunbeam and they're happy. Yep. Okay, my hound choices. Beagle. Nothing compares to a wonderful confirmation bred beagle. They are wonderful. And you can watch them run away for days. <laughs> you can hear them run away for days. <laughs> that too. Beagles, I wanted one. I love them. There are like the non-working line of the working line beagles, probably a very bad choice for most people. But a confirmation bred beagle, oh, they're just wonderful. They are just delightful. And even when they're bad, they're so cute that you can still smile. The <laughs> only thing is they're baying. Yes. When they're going to be bad, you can hear them coming from blocks away as they drive towards my house. It is true. They like to make noise. So beagles, Rupert has totally changed my mind on a breed. I had thought bassets were useless and never understood why people have them. And now I think that everyone should have one. <laughs> and That's I've, I mean, I've previously been attacked by a basset. <laughs> they can be quite bad. But Rupert has completely changed my opinions on Basset Hounds. They are delightful, lazy, charming creatures. Yes, Rupert is wonderful. And I spent a lot of time trying to talk you out of Rupert. Yeah, you were very mean. You and my husband both. <laughs> my third choice, I've picked four, don't judge me, was Whippet. I agree with you on that. And then my last one, it's not even my last one. It might be my first one, is PBGVs, Petite Basset Griffin Von Dahn. I've always wanted one. Yeah. I love them. They are delightful. They make you laugh. And they're completely unknown. No one knows about them. They're mischievous, but in a delightful way. I love them. Everyone should have a PBGV. I love them too. Everyone, but me being the first. You being the first. Okay. Yeah. I remember talking to a breeder at a dog show years ago when I thought maybe I would get one. And she sang at the praises and told me how wonderful it was all the way through our conversation. And then she said at the end, but they can never go off leash. Oh, but every breed says that. I was told that with my Italian greyhound. Well, I think all of the hound people say that. Like the scent hounds are going to stick their nose down and go. The sight hounds are going to see something and go. And I know it's a training thing, but that was her one negative about the breed yeah <clears throat> yeah all right next group this working. is easy we're flying through no yeah, these are the working dogs herding working no they're Our lumped breed. together am i in a different country in my kennel no. club no they have been broken apart but yes my my book that i've got in front of me is so old that they're still together so yeah we'll just do them together all right working herding my first ones are, if you want a herding breed, you're thinking Border Collie, don't. don't. Just don't. I say that as a lover of Border Collies. Instead, go get yourself a Smooth Collie. I think they're one of the most underappreciated breeds out there. They are everything you want to have in a Border Collie without all the stuff that you actually do get in a Border Collie. Oh, yeah. All the stuff you don't need in a Border yeah. Collie. Yeah. Yep. It's Lassie without the coat. What more could you want? You'll find out what Timmy's in the well and you don't have to waste all the time grooming. <laughs> that is true. 
However, they're not as smart as they used to be. So but dumb know, dogs are way more delightful. No one needs clever. I was going to say, you won't get the intelligence of the Border Collie, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> and I think we need to address that as now that it's come up. I very rarely in my board and trains get dumb dogs. Dumb dogs are easy to live with. They're agreeable. Rupert, it's the clever ones that all need board and train. Bo a clever dog shouldn't be probably in pet homes unless you're really keen and a hobbyist and want to do a lot more with them. Yeah. Yeah. What's your first? Bearded Collies. Ah, good choice. That's one of mine too. They're, they're another nice herding breed if you can deal with the coat. And the coat is more like hair than it is fur. Like it's even different than a long-haired dog like, like a long-haired Border Collie. The hair on a Bearded Collie is more like fine people hair. But if you can deal with that hair, they're a lovely dog. They have a nice temperament. They're a lot of fun. They have a cheeky sense of humor. They're mischievous. Yeah. I really like beardies. They, and they are truly a secret, I think. No one knows about them. No, not many of them out there. I think in my years working at a vet clinic, I think I only ever had one. Yeah. yeah. My next one, my second one actually, is Shelties. Okay. I love Shelties. I think they're super little dogs, minus the barking. I, w I was going to say I love them as well, but the barking would be a deal breaker for me. What's your third? My third, I love the Samoids. I mean, there's something about them that is intriguing. They're fun. They're, Beautiful. they're another one of those mischievous dogs that they've always got a smile on their face. They have a lovely temperament. Um, I've never met. I've never met a nasty one. I've met very pushy, rude ones, but even then, they do it with a smile on their face. I really like them too. They're nice dogs. The one of the things I would warn about them is the barking again. Yeah. And while you can kind of Sheltie owners tend to just block out their Sheltie's barking, Sammy owners don't. Yeah. You can't block it out. It's rather loud. But they are delightful, charming dogs. Yep. You're next. Oh, I did my three. Smooth Collie, Sheltie, and a Beardy. But I'm adding in here, and I shouldn't because I don't know enough about them. But I was with a whole bunch of Valhuns, Teela's Valhuns. Oh, my goodness. Everyone needs a little pack of Valhuns. They are delightful. <laughs> Not just but, one, but a pack. I know, but I say this with Tila, who is an amazing handler. So I don't know if they'd be absolutely little devils in a pet home or if they're equally charming in a pet home. I cannot answer that question. But what a charming, fun little breed. I love them. They're very cute. I don't, yeah, I don't know anything about them, but there's... We all need one. We all need a Valhund. <laughs> Teela is going to be in lots of business. <laughs> Start breeding, Teela. We all need one. Get with send it. Me, send me one. I Everyone's want an obedience one, please. Everyone's going to be contacting Teela. Terriers. No, we're not done. We have okay. What? We have the because most of those ones are are mid sized. The Bernese Mountain Dogs are a lovely pet. They come with health issues. They live to age four. Well, yeah, they don't live very long at all. But they are, they're a lovely family dog. You're going to get me in trouble. Why? Not as much trouble as when I talk about the mediocre Danes. I like female Bernese mountain dogs. But I do agree, they do make great pets. Yep. And I'm censoring myself. I'm stopping there. Terriers. Terriers. Norwich. Norfolk. Everyone needs a Norwich Terrier. <laughs> Either one, a Norwich or a Norfolk, depending on what you want with the ears. Norwich, just delightful. Without the headaches that you get with so many of the other Terriers. I am a Terrier person. I started with Terriers. So I've had, well, I haven't had Wirehead Fox Terriers, but that was my start in dogs. I've had an Airedale, Amstaffs, Irish. I had any others that's it feels like more the Irish aged me so I've had a lot of terriers but I always had the long-legged ones 
Whereas I think there's short-legged ones are a whole lot easier. So the Norwich wins my number one vote. What's your number one? I would probably, well, either one, the Norwich or the Norfolk. Yeah. Norwich, okay. prick ears, Norfolks are folded. Um, the are they same in temperament or the Norwich is a little bit naughtier? I cannot answer that. I could if I flipped into my book. <clears throat> Nor... 53. Let's just take a look and see. North. Oh, used to, was used to create the Norwich Terrier. No, whatever breeding was used to create the Norwich Terrier also applies to the Norfolk. Temperament alert and fearless for the Norfolk. Temperament gay and fearless for the Norwich. Gay. So sweet. Yep. Love them. My number two would be Cairns. And through the years, I have worked with some naughty cairns, but very, very few, given how popular they are. Because there's a lot of cairn terriers in pet homes. They're really delightful. But some of them can be a little bit naughtier, but way less so than the other terrier breeds. They're charming. They're solid, stout little terriers. So they're little, but they're not. And they've got just a great sense of humor, charming personality. I really do like them. Nice. What's your, we'll count your Norwich and Norfolk as one. What's your second pick? Border Terriers. Okay. I like the borders. You don't see a lot failing in homes? Mm, no. But again, not a super popular breed, so... Hard. I see a lot of Border Terriers causing heartbreak. In their families. Why? So, I, so while I do love them, they're not a breed I would recommend. Not, not on something like this, like you have to kind of know what you might be getting into. They can have a fair bit of dog aggression and give you a run for your money. Hmm. All right. I've not seen that. So that's probably not a good family pet dog then. No, I don't think so. Not... Not on something like this where we're saying these are the ones that we recommend. I wouldn't recommend a border. I do like them, but I wouldn't recommend them because I've seen enough people fail with them. And people that are good, good, solid people that shouldn't be failing with them. Hmm. Another breed I see out here a lot that I, when I was a kid, these guys used to be so mean and nasty. And now... As an adult where I live, I've met so many of them that are just delightful and charming. And they're Westies. I love the Westies now. They're such light, fun, mischievous imps. They are. They're a nice dog. Again, they're one that comes with more than their share of health issues. But yes, temperament-wise, they're, they're a nice little dog. Health-wise, is it mostly skin or other stuff too? Mostly allergies, some kind of okay. some kind of skin. There might be a specific skin thing that Westies. No, I think it's allergies, which I can't, I can't like think. seriously serious allergies, which is affecting the skin. Yep. Is what I see out here. So be careful getting one. Know your breeders, but charming little dogs. They really are lovely. Yeah. Very endearing little monkeys. They are. Oh, you know what? I just had a note here. We have to jump back to the sporting breed. Okay, what? Because a n fairly new one that's out now is ah. called a Quaker, Quaker Hunjin. Quaker Hund. Quaker for short, K-O-O-I-K-E-R. We'll bring it up if anybody wants to research it. But they're a, like a small spaniel sized sporting dog. Mostly white with red and black tips. They're adorable and they have a lovely temperament. I'm yet to meet one. I think you would fall in love if you did. I think so. I'm hearing great things about them. Yeah. Yeah. So on the softer side, temperament wise, is what I've heard from some breeders, which is okay for me and for most pet homes. Yeah. Soft is good for pet people. Mm -hmm. Toy dogs, another favorite group. And as I was looking at these ones, I just started listing off like so many. <laughs> this is a very special group of dogs. 
that are underappreciated, I think. Some of them are like, it seems that everyone gets one or two types of these and they're missing all the other wonderful characters that are in this group. There's a lot of nice ones there. What's your first? My first would probably be a pug. I love them. I love yeah. pugs. Yeah. So yeah. delightful. The only I, downside is the short face, the elongated palate, but. I have only now, ever before. worked with one aggressive pug in all the years. And I've worked with a lot of pugs. And even when this thing used to launch to attack, it took everything I had. I had to actually bite my tongue so I didn't laugh. <laughs> like they are just delightful. Yeah. I, I love them. I can't say enough good things about them. And I, I think with dogs like this, like I see them in puppy class. I see them in pet manners. I never get them in board and train. I wish I did, which says a lot. Do you get it really many, does say a lot. Do you get many toys, period, in board and train? Quickly flicking through the group. Yes, Australian terriers. Silkies, Aussie terriers. Are they toys or terriers, the Aussies? Uh, they're, they're terriers. Terrier. They're the terriers. Minpin, chihuahuas. Had many a chihuahua in board and train. I think uh, so. Maltese. Many, I've I had Maltese in board and train. So many people just accept the rotten toy behavior because they're five pounds. They can just pick them up. I, I'm, I don't necessarily agree with you having now raised a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, but you're a trainer. But so many people, like the dogs, want to kill the dog walking past and they just pick it up and walk away because it's just little. Well, that's why I'm saying I don't agree with you. Try and stop them, Jill. You haven't had one. <laughs> They're bad. It's like a baby Malinois. <laughs> They're just bad to the bone. So I had always believed that <laughs> until I actually had my own. <laughs> They're just so naughty. Like they come with true aggression. <laughs> Well, and I guess I want, when they're three want, pounds, it's hard to do anything about it without hurting them. Oh, I want another chihuahua. I want a herd of them. All right. So we're talking about the good, easy ones, though. Chihuahua are right. not on that list. <laughs> uh, we were saying what dogs I've had in board and train. I also had a pom, oh, and I would have kept him. And if they're listening, please bring him back. <laughs> I asked them to will him to me. Uh, he he was so special. It was like so special. What a wonderful dog. So yes, I have worked with a lot of toys in board and train, but I've loved, I think, every single one of them. Hmm. So what are the best ones that we don't see people fail with? What's your first? Uh, I said pug. Mm. Indeed you did. My first is Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Love I love Cavaliers. And I have seen people struggle with them a bit, but I think the struggles are very manageable and enjoyable. Like you grow together, you learn together. It's not, there's not that feeling of despair like you can have with some of the other breeds. And Cavaliers are just such loving, kind, good souls. Yeah, they're, just a, they're just an all around nice dog. Somebody once described them to me as being a golden retriever in a small body. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Cavaliers are wonderful. They can struggle with a fair bit of health stuff. Mm -hmm. And early onset deafness is one of the heartbreakers in them. Because if you have a, like a four-year-old dog that goes deaf, their life gets quite small fast. So do check the lines for deafness. Yeah. But Cavaliers are amazing little dogs. I absolutely love them. Yeah, they're wonderful. What's your second, Jilly? Papillons. Ah, love them. I love a little papillon, yeah. I love papillons. I think, you know, I've never even worked with them in pet manners, puppy class, never. I only know them through dog world, like dog sports and that. They are more breakable size-wise for families, if you've got kids, stuff like that. Yeah. They are quite little. But what fun little dogs. Yep. If you have a kid that wants to get into agility or a sport or something like that, Papillon is the number one breed to go to in my mind. They're, sure. yep. they're fantastic little things. They're willing to try anything. 
It's like a teeny tiny border collie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My number two is a Brussels sprout. <laughs> I love them. Um, their real name is Brussels griffins. They're a little wiry, puggy type thing. And they look like a monkey. That's more the Affen Pincher, isn't it? Yeah, I guess they still do. The Brussels have a bit of a monkey, but yes, the Affen Pincher is a big one. Um, they're delightful little creatures again. Like they're just funny, sweet, delightful, like wonderful, wonderful dogs. Brussels Griffin. That's my number two. That's Go a, ahead. That's all of our toy stuff. Oh no, I have my number three is pugs. Okay. My number. So they my third. I love pugs. Absolutely love them. And then I couldn't stop. I kept picking more. <laughs> I had to add Pomeranians. They're just wonderful. I love them. They're spicy and sweet and funny and bring Loki back. I need him. <laughs> so Poms are very special. I think everyone should have a closet Pom in their house. And another breed that's underestimated is Japanese chins. They're delightful, like just wonderful. In puppy class, I've had a lot of Shih Tzu puppies. And I think a Shih Tzu puppy is like a baby Rottweiler. And I think that's why they go so wrong. Because they have so much push and jam and power to them as puppies. And I think people get lost along the way and forget that because they're a toy dog and then they get nasty and ruined. I would love to raise a Shih Tzu for myself. I really would. And I think every Rottweiler person should have a closet Shih Tzu. I think they'd love them. My Rottweiler friend has a, what does she have right now? A pug. Pug, but she's had a Shih Tzu as well. But you jump to the non-sporting breed because Shih Tzus aren't toys. They are. They aren't. Looking right at it. Non-sporting. Shih Tzu. Oh, I, I, my book must be from a different country. The one I'm looking at because it has them in with toys. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, mine says non-sporting. Okay, yeah. I have to look now what country my book is from. A standard guide to purebred dogs. Great Britain. Oh, there you go. Mediocre Britain? <laughs> that was rude. <laughs> Harry, come, come here and don't be bad with Pippa. All right. And then, okay, I can stop on that group. But I also do love Yorkshire Terriers as well. They can be pretty cute. And Maltese. Hard to, hard to potty train, though. When you get and English toy spaniels. Why don't you just say all of the toys? That's probably well, the biggest I'm... challenge in the toy breeds is... Is house, house training. training. Yeah. Oh, and we missed the most obvious, a toy poodle. Like, what compares? Like, poodles are wonderful. The toys and the minis are super, super dogs. Yeah. Toys are a little bit too tiny for me, so they weren't on my top pick, but they are lovely, lovely dogs. Yeah. All right. Smart, smart. Next is the non-sporting group, Jilly Willy. Well, we just touched on the poodles. Non-sporting standard and miniature. I'm, I'm not a fan of the standards, but I do love the toys and the miniatures. If you're into sports and want a delightful dog that is truly a family pet, I think the minis are a real win. Yeah. I see a lot of people struggle with their standards. And that's the thing. Poodles are so clever. And a clever dog is not a good pet, so. But I think the minis can be. Yeah. Yep, they're another one that's game for anything, though. You know, a poodle person who had a miniature poodle that got a field title on it. Oh, wow. Yep. How did it pick up a duck? They just made sure they were throwing small birds. Wow. But he got his W, I don't know if he ended up getting his WCX. Wow. But yeah, he was he got some some of the field titles. Yep. What's your next? Caissons. They're another Caissons. one that to me they're a little bit in my mind Samoidish. Like they're that happy, silly, big grin. Class clown. Yeah. Yep. Another 
another nice one for a family that you don't see. I do lot. like Keith. They're a little bit naughtier. But again, I've never had one in a board and train. They are fun, lovely little dogs, but maybe funner than you would like. <laughs> Some of the fun is taken at your expense, Nikki Sund. Yes. They like to have fun, not always when you do. Yes. My second pick would be a Tibetan Spaniel. Yeah, that would be mine as well. And I think for a lot of the people that want a toy dog, but want a dog that's a little bit more substantial than a toy dog, a Tibetan Spaniel is a very good choice. Uh, they are super, super little dogs. Right. And I think quite healthy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know a whole lot about them, but I do know that I love little Vinny. Yeah, we all love little Vinny. What's your next one? Those were the only ones I had down for the non-sportings. I had to kind of stop here because I, like, I'm saying with dogs that are good for families. So I love Frenchies, but there's eight million so them. many people struggle with Frenchies or have to remortgage their house to pay their vet bills. So it's not one I can recommend on here because well, um, I think are, if you go to a legit Frenchie breeder who's breeding properly, not breeding for the colors that are not accepted because they come with all of the health issues, then I think you have a much better chance of getting a nice dog that will be healthy. But when you're starting to look at the blues or the merles or the fluffies, those have just added a bunch of garbage in with the Frenchies that is just going to cause problems. I, I think uh, so many of them have spine issues if they're from good bloodlines or not, is what I'm seeing. That comes from the natural tail bob. That's a mid, yep. midline, midline thing. Yeah. Yep. So as much as I love Frenchies, they're not on my list. And I do love bitch and frizzies. But again, they're Bichon Frise. But they are hard to house train. But they are fun little dogs too. I actually see very few of them. I, yeah, I don't see a lot of them out there now. So it seems the majority of people are going the Frenchie route. And as a kid, I always wanted a Boston. But the Bostons now are so different than what they were like when I was a kid. They used to be much more stable. Now I'd say they're much more frantic. Yeah. They've really changed the Bostons. They used to be more pug-like kind yeah. of in personality. Yeah. And now they're wingdings. Yeah. My brother has a Boston Cross who's, she's a wonderful little dog, but she's got something. I think she's got pug in her. So she gets two of the, two of the good ones. Yeah. Any other breeds worth a mention? We got any new ones that are out that wouldn't be in our books? Well, I'm going to the section that means my book's very old. I think if you're going into the rarer breeds, you have to be very, very careful of temperament for what you get. Because unless you're actually in the breed as a hobbyist, like promoting the breed in that, you're getting the puppy in the litter that's last, that needs the home. Yeah. So you're not going to be getting a good example of the breed. So be careful if you're going into the very rare breeds. Or do your homework first so that you can get the top one in that litter. Yes. Hey, hey. As soon as things start to happen, the dogs start to play. It's because yours are bad. I know. My dogs are good. That's why I'm <laughs> holding Harry by his collar right now as I look through my book. Exactly. Oh, he's well, got a unicorn. He's happy again. I need to order a new uh, book. Well, and yeah, a new breed book because there's so many in here that aren't in my book. I agree. All right. I think we can stop this one. Our next one is going to be the dog breeds that fail in pet homes, the ones that we say you shouldn't be getting. And I think that's a very important podcast to try yeah. and save some of these poor dogs from the fate that they have. Yeah. Not to mention the owners. Yeah, it's true. Everybody's miserable. Well, sometimes just the dog's miserable. Well, sometimes just the owner's miserable. The dog's quite happy being awful. 
Well, this not the ones good, I'm thinking of, but yeah. It's not a good match. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good night, Julie. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.